And, you know, you talk about this um, multitude of complex factors. One of the things that I, I'd be curious to hear your thoughts on, because you are a strong advocate for pay equity and there's a pay equity pledge on right now, we've also had this complexity around the Supreme Court decisions with affirmative action and what else is going on in the country. How does that play into what you're seeing on the ground. Are you concerned because when we look at pay equity, it's not just what you're paid, it's obviously the conditions into which you're come into the workforce and training and everything else. What are your thoughts on that? Well, you know, California is in an interesting uh, place when it comes to affirmative, affirmative right. action because uh, affirmative action was first banned um, by the regents, University, the of, University California. of California, right? Yep. University of California regents, and then it was statewide. And so um, I have a, a quite a bit of experience in this space simply because um, a lot of the work that I did at the university um, was it, trying to understand how we create um, an undergraduate or graduate, you know, um, sector in our state of California that's competitive but also diverse. So I think what you will see in California, and we are seeing it now, we have a lot of other states coming to California and asking us, how does California do it? And so one of the things that I think happened um, when we lost affirmative action in the state of California, you know, decades ago, um, is that we really unpacked what that meant, what that mm -hmm. box meant when you checked off, I am a woman. Um, and so, um, as, you know, when you look at that, you also look at the fact that uh, there are other elements that, you know, California and other states still look at. We look at, for example, diverse experiences, and that includes, are you the first in your family to go to college? You know, did you grow up in a, you know, family that received, you know, state aid? Um, you look at some of the zip codes um, and, and you look at like, is this a zip code where they have a lower than college average going rate. Like there's so many elements um, that we have been able to look at. And so I think that California um, regrettably has been in this situation for you know a couple decades. It's not a, a, a Supreme Court decision. I think that um, you know feels good or is what we think is in the right direction. Mm -hmm. However, we are leading in this space because we know um, how to continue to do this work, both at the employer sector, sec the employer sector, but also the education sector and so many others um, to be able to recruit the most diverse, you know, um, excellent individuals into our workforce, into, you know, our, our um, uh, education system. So I think that we are in a unique place, but we are ready um, to keep doing that work and working with other states who are asking themselves. Yeah, well, there's we certainly really been a lot of attention. Everybody has an yeah. opportunity. The University of California system certainly has gotten a lot of attention for that reason. Um, Let's talk about the pay equity pledge. I think of those terms, I'm from the government and I'm here to help, which is never always can make, make the mind, you know, the soul sore. It can make people um, think government is the problem. You know, I think this is very powerful legislation that has come out. Now you have this pay equity pledge and talk about why, why would you need that and what, how does that augment you know, what's now essentially the law of the land in California, at least, you know, from a reporting and a transparency point of view. So our commitment to pay equity, I think, is such that we know that there are, you know, legislative, uh, you know, efforts uh, to try to get folks to kind of course correct and, and ensure that, you know, the workforce is diverse, that the workforce is competitive, that the workforce is equitable. But there's also non-legislative tools. And so uh, Truziak uh, came to us uh, to try to do this. Talk about the role of this pay equity pledge in all this and why, why do we need one? Is it more transparency? I, well, I think an equity pledge is uh, also about increasing uh, the effort, right? There's the legislative effort, but there's also the private sector effort that comes from the private sector saying, I want to sign up, let's do this, and I'd like to take a pledge, and I'd like to be public 
about my company's pledge to do the right thing and make sure that we have um, pay transparency. And so Trizea came to us um, also because they have, um, you know, they're very interested in doing this and they have the incredible and amazing uh, Megan Rapino working with mm-hmm. them as well. And so she has U.S. Been soccer the player, yeah. U.S. soccer player, yes. U.S. soccer uh, player who, who I think so many of us know well. And she's been leading the effort in her space, right? in her sector um, as a, a you know global competitive athlete and so this is something that we thought would be an incredible opportunity to say look you're, whether you're coming from the private sector or whether you're coming from government we would love to join and not and give the companies credit and say here are the companies in the states in the country who have said I am in we want to have pay equity and we are committed to doing that and so that is what the uh pledge is and we're very excited that we were able to launch that um you know just a a matter of a few weeks ago